Now, we've looked at modern examples, but obviously if you work for an oil and gas company or if you're interested in water resources, water resources is a big, big uh, business and very important on island like those, you're interested in seismic images. And it's important to understand that the Bahamas and other systems are actually analog for subsurface examples. So here I'm showing you a picture on the left from a, um, a satellite image from an isolated system offshore Belize. And on the right is actually a seismic amplitude map from a Mycene platform offshore Sarawak. And in terms of geometry, they look very similar. The scale is not quite the same, but the geometries are very similar. So it's very tempting to use everything we know about these modern isolated systems to the subsurface. And by and large, I think we can, although you do need to keep in mind that if you're looking at a very ancient system, Devonian or, uh, or maybe Permian, or even not so ancient, but where the production of carbonate is by organisms very different than modern corals, there might be some differences too. So always be wary of analogs, use them, but be smart about how you use them. But now I'd like to spend a bit of time showing you seismic examples of isolated uh, platform. And this is an example from the Mycene to Pliocene Segidiga platform offshore Indonesia. And um, what I want to draw your attention to is how we can use the margin, so, so the reef track here, which is characterized on this seismic line by chaotic reflectors. And you can very clearly see those chaotic reflectors here. And then on the left, you have parallel reflector that represent basinal deposit. And on the right, you have chaotic to parallel reflector that represent the inner platform because the platform is better bedded. And you can see that on this example, um, it's very clear that the margin first aggregate, then retrograde. So we have a, a sense that maybe we're looking at, if we just interpret this one image, we're looking at a TST. And then it's followed by progradation. So we would call this the HST of the system. But the problem with carbonates and actually with clastics as well is that what we see in terms of trajectory of the reef track is a function of two things. It's a function of base level change, so sea level rise, sea level fall, but it's also a function of localized production of sediments, of, of carbonates. So you cannot really separate these two things. And that example of the Segidiga platform is great because if you look at different sides of the same platform, so here on the left is the one image I showed you, on the right are three other um, seismic image of the same platform, so the same sequence, exactly same sequence. You can see that on the western platform corner, we see only retrogradational shelf edge trajectory. On the southern platform margin, we see a progradational uh, trajectory. And on the northern platform margin, it's aggradational. So the point here is you always have to look very carefully at trajectory of the uh, reef track or trajectory of the shoal or even in classic trajectory of the beach sand because it only tells you something about the combination of base level change and sediment supply. Okay, so that those two concepts cannot be um, uh, separated. So be aware of that problem. And speaking of sediment supply, what happens if a platform, an isolated platform, cannot produce sufficient sediments to fill accommodation. Now, in normal condition, we've seen in the previous classes that, that at least the modern corals produce sediments in excess of the rate of sea level rise that the, uh, the Holocene um, has seen. But if the ecological conditions are no longer ideal for carbonate growth, so that could be because water temperature has changed or turbidity has changed, or maybe nutrient supply has changed, then their rate of growth could decline. And if that happens, the isolated carbonates, so on isolated platform, can be really in trouble. So here's an example from the uh, South China Sea. 
And you can very clearly recognize at the base of this seismic sequence a platform. You know, you can see this chaotic reflector, you have strong reflector inside the platform. You can just about understand and see where the reef track would be right here. And then on the left, you have the slope and the basin. And that's so that's a beautiful platform. But you can see that we have a very strong reflector at the top of this platform, even like a little mounded structure there. And this strong reflector is followed in the seismic by very different, much weaker reflectors that are effectively clastic sediments. So that strong reflector is a drowning surface. That's when the carbonate production completely ceased. When we will talk about diagenesis, we will see why this reflector is so strong. But this is basically a drowning unconformity. This is a type of unconformity that is unique to carbonates, is very easy to pick up in the seismic uh, record, and so it can be a very useful marker as a timeline for you. So luckily we have a well through that example here, so we can look at how drowning happens. And this is what we see. We have the, the uh, death on the vertical axis. We have carbon isotopes. We're not going to worry too much about this. Gamma ray also will not uh, worry too much about this. We'll focus on the core. So you can see that we have uh, at the base of this sequence skeletal grainstone and packstone, and they're followed by rhodolith's um, rotstone. Now, rhodolites are red algae, and red algae actually perform pretty well in waters that are not um, completely clear. So, so rhodolites typically live in deeper waters. So the top of the platform is already giving us an indication that the main production shifted from what was maybe corals before to red algae that actually can grow in darker uh, condition, in less, in less uh, light. Now, this is confirmed by looking at foraminifers. We see that we have a decline in large benthic forums that require light to grow, the myogypsinids, and we have an increase of the other benthic forum, but also a clear increase in planktic or planktonic foraminifers. So here we have a clear indication in the uh, facies of those rocks that the platform was progressively starting to be in deeper waters. Um, and then eventually it gave up because you have shales at the top and you have this drowning unconformity.